G'day friends and welcome to another one of my videos. Yes, it's been a long time, but I've got some really exciting updates. Work has been going crazy and as you know from my previous videos, you need to take care of business first. But anyway, it's actually starting to hum along just nicely. So I thought I'd get back into the YouTube uh, way of life, uh, especially on the weekends when I've got a bit of time. And I thought I'd give you an update vlog style of what's been happening in this studio. And I'm getting really happy with it. And uh, let's do a bit of an update into how it's going. So stick around. And welcome back. Now, the first thing we're going to talk about is the cameras that I've got set up as like studio cameras. So they're not moving, they're going to be stationary and I have them set up for multi-purpose. For example, the first thing I've got here is my main camera, which is pointing at me and that's a Sony RX0. And I've got it more on a sort of web conference type of setup, but I've got two more. So I've got camera two, which is this one here. And then camera three, which is that one here. And the whole point of this setup is for me to eventually use it like a podcast, right? So I'll have two people sitting across each other and then you've got the central camera. All I need to do is obviously get the next uh, the table to extend. And then I'm going to have a very sort of easy and maintainable studio. So that I just want to show you those angles so you kind of get a grip of what I'm trying to sort of, I guess, elaborate. So I'm going to grab my uh, trusty Canon M50 and I'm going to do uh, a bit of a tour of the room to make sure that you can actually see how it's all been set up and things like that. So let me cut over to the new camera or the M50. I wish it was a new camera to the M50 right now. And we're back vlog style using the Canon M50 with the 11 to 22 millimeter Canon f.4. Still a classic a vlogging um, lens for this camera. I know it doesn't have a shallow depth of field, but it is an amazing, amazing uh, little um, versatile zoom lens. So if you've got an M50 and you want a, a nice zoom that's going to give you a wide angle, uh, the 11 uh, to 25 is an amazing, 11 to 22, sorry, is an amazing one. So what we're doing now, we've got the Rode Wireless Go connected so you can hear me clearly uh, as I flip the camera around from selfie to not selfie. So first of all, let's have a good look around the, ca the, the room, right? So I'm going to take you across this way so you can see. Um, and as you can see, I've got it all set up uh, in sort of this configuration. So it's a rectangular room. Um, it is, it does, uh, has enough room. So I'll move the chair out of the way. Um, so as you can see, I've got a window, but I've also attached like this really uh, sort of um, clear, a blocking blind that sort of cuts out all the light. Um, and that's, that's really helpful to sort of control the lighting conditions in the room. Uh, what was finding before is that I can turn off the lights um, and then I've still got that light, but then if I come here, obviously we've got the, you know, the um, 120D uh, to actually give us some a real cool lighting, and so it's a beautiful uh, soft box uh, that it has, and it is an awesome device. Uh, if you need some light, save up for it. You will not make. Uh, you will not regret it. So let's do this bit by bit because I'm just waffling on and I uh, just want to make sure you understand the setup. So like I was telling you before with the cameras, so what we've got here is we've got a Sony RX0 as my primary camera. Make sure I point at the right thing. Then I've got a secondary one right there. And then I've got a, the third one right there. Now all of them, they're all hanging on the back of the actual monitor stands. So I've got monitor stands, adjustable monitor stands, and I'm just using uh, little clamps to actually keep those cameras in, in place. And they are you know, doing a good job because I can adjust them, move them, raise them, do whatever I want. 
Uh, in, originally, this table was supposed to be a stand-up, sit-down table, but I've got so much kit hanging off it now, I'm a little bit scared to raise it, and, but then I also have the light. So with the light, uh, we've got the uh, Aperture 120D, which is a classic now. And as you can see, what I've done is I've mounted it um, above, right? So you can see I've got this um, large Manfrotto extendable arm up there. Now I've got um, a dot nine solutions um, clamp at, at the top and that's allowing me just to put the light directly on there. Um, and that clamp is really steady, it's adjustable so I can move it around. Now the only thing that I sort of having a bit of a problem with is that the control box, whoops, <laughs> sorry guys, the control box um, is sort of just sitting there. Uh, what I want to do is take it out of the way by sort of also hanging it from, um, from the roof there so then I can just be out of the way. As you know, these uh, aperture lights, they're controlled by a remote control, right? So for me, it's not a big deal if I want to turn it off and on because I could just use the remote control, right? Now, I do have a secondary light, which I use as a, you know, fill light uh, when I'm sort of, when the room's a little bit too dark. And then that is also an aperture one. Um, it's, I got it on AC, but it also uses batteries. Um, and it's also wireless. I can also control that one from there. Now, the whole point with the, I've got the house lights as well um, from the, um, from the roof. Uh, it's still got the, the fire alarm's got to be installed, so I've got some cabling hanging off there. But what I want to do eventually is put some uh, racks or I guess some, um, let's say, um, you know, some type of management at the top where I can actually hang uh, lights uh, and not have them on the floor like that one, right? So what I want to do is have it so that it's all... Uh, up there and if I need any more noise um, reduction or you know reverb reduction I can also put some some noise stuff up there or noise cancelling pads up there but for the moment it seems to be okay so that's lighting so it's doing a wonderful job um, I'm having a great time using the lights now that they're working on remote control and they're doing just fine so let's have a talk about sound because that's been my achilles heel in the past so let's see what i've done with that particular area now this is a very old building um practically brick um double layered brick uh and then it's sort of rendered stucco and so putting anything on the walls requires a, a bit of drilling. So I found this solution online and I'll put as many of the links as possible. None of them affiliated. I haven't got around to doing that just yet. But um, these particular panels, um, they are actually made by a UK company. And this is sort of the London type of branding that they use. They're called London. Anyway, you, I'll, the links are below. Um, should be more prepared for this video, but anyway, I'll put the word up there and, and all that sort of stuff. So if you have a look at these particular panels, they're actually uh, a little bit thick. They're probably like an inch thick. And uh, what they do is um, they're stuck on the wall. So I've put some uh, double-sided tape, some industrial strength double-sided tape on the back. And then I've also put a little uh, hook. They're like hooks, like clamps. And what I do is uh, I sort of push it, the foam onto the wall and then practically hook them onto those hooks that are just stuck on the wall using double-sided tape, right? And so what I've done is I've done this sort of pattern that's recommended by the company. But then at the same time, I've done the same on the wall. So if you can have a look at this, um, I've actually done four on that side and then I've done four on this side. So as you can see, I've got the old uh, sort of foamy cubie boards that I used to use in the old office. Now, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with them, but more than likely, I'm going to put them on the back wall. So be behind the light uh, in, in, and around the window. So I'm, I'll get a couple more of those and sort of just give it that aesthetic. The, the gray color seems to match, so I'll keep on using that. 
And so, as you can tell, there's a lot of black and a lot of grey. Uh, so I'm thinking about a theme. I'll talk about the aesthetics and the sort of uh, theming later on. So sound proof, or not proofing, but sound uh, uh, reduction or noise reduction was one of the things that was my problem. And just those panels on the walls have made such a big difference. They're actually cancelling a lot of the reverb in this room. And I'm really happy. Hopefully you can hear it. And if you've watched some of our other videos, obviously I've touched upon that. So then now that I've got the recording in place, what am I doing as far as mics, right? So let's have a talk about mics and uh, how I'm sort of recording sound in the room now that it's been treated. So for podcasting in the past, I've actually used little pod mics from Rode and they tend to do the trick when you're doing podcasts and I don't mind them, but I cannot go past my love of my life. It's a Procaster. Um, it sort of has enough of the features that I want uh, from a mic and the sound. Um, I've got a very nasally voice, medium nasally voice. And with the big bottom and all the sort of cool um, things you could do with uh, the devices, you know, you can sort of fix that up and it's kind of kind of cool. I've done two podcasts. Um, I put them on Apple in case you actually want to listen to them. Just look for Fern Lacaros. They're there. And uh, they are really, really uh, recorded well because of, you know, this mic and I love it. And I've got it on the, on the Rode mic, uh, sorry, arm. And I can use that uh, in front of the camera um, when I'm recording, but they can, I can also put it away when I'm not using it, which is really helpful. Now, uh, I do want to also record without having a mic in front of my face, especially when you're doing meetings or you're recording some type of uh, tutorial or something like that. You want to sort of be hands free. So what I've done, I couldn't afford anything a little bit more classy or cool. So I just went for the cheapest road one I could get, which was the NTG uh, one. Now that's been around for a while. Um, uh, it sort of does the purpose. Um, obviously what I wanted in the beginning was a lot of this sort of noise cancellation from the ambient. And uh, this mic doesn't tend to do it super, super well, but it is good enough if you're on a budget and you have your room treated. Now that I've got my room treated, that mic has actually started to uh, come into its own uh, life, right? Because obviously before I was worried about all the echo that it was capturing, but now it's uh, pretty good. It, dis it does capture a lot of sounds. Let me show you what um, the Rode, uh, Rodecaster Pro is actually sort of recording, and I'm gonna go quiet. Uh, so have a look at this. So it still picks up a lot of ambient sound, so it's not clean, but thankfully I can adjust all that, reduce the noise in post-production and it came out pretty clean. I think the last video I did, I used that and it came out really good. So that's the mics. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, I think uh, they're gonna be around for a while. I'm not planning to change that in any way. Uh, from a mobile vlogging perspective, obviously the um, wireless goes are the way to go. They're awesome little device. Um, so that's the mics. Now I've done some videos on this before. So you want to check out some of the reviews on the equipment that I'm using in detail. Uh, there are obviously, if you have a look at the playlist on reviews, you'll be able to see some of them. Now the one that I'm using for sound at the moment for recording the sound is my beautiful Rodecaster Pro. It is a fantastic device that has so many features. You can connect multiple devices and it is uh, something that I've just learned to love. Then we've got uh, for video, the A10 Mini Pro ISO. Now I love that device and the reason I love it so much is because it records all the independent uh, video streams uh, in one go and then you can edit them later on uh, and you can pick and choose which um, I guess a video source you want to do. And what I've done is I've actually got the sound from the Rodecaster Pro going directly into the A10 Mini. I did a, a sound test. Uh, the, A, the A10 Mini Pro is a powerful audio device as well. It has all the settings that you need in order to control the input 
uh, as, as you know, and so does the Rodecaster, but obviously what I'm concentrating more is on video. Now, I was gonna get a fancy um, audio interface, but the Rodecaster Pro is an audio interface, and so is the A10 uh, Mini. So I was gonna get like a Scarlett, um, like something that, you know, has got a lot of inputs. But my son, uh, he's, he's a music uh, and sound producer. He actually put me onto a very simple solution that cost me a fraction. So I've got this sort of, uh, it's actually called a patch bay, right? So now the patch bay itself, allows me to um, distribute sound from one source to another, right? So for example, if I wanna listen to uh, the audio when I'm editing on the JBLs, all I do is just move them to the respective output. It took me a little while to sort of work out, you know, what's in, how it all works. But it is a very simple fix and it's very inexpensive. This is what um, musicians use in studios all the time. There's very little noise. Um, it doesn't require any power. I just put in my little multi-purpose rack there and uh, it seems to be doing the trick just fine. And so when then when I wanna record uh, the device using the AT Mini Pro, um, what I do is I just swoop over the, the patch bay and then I'm recording it. It's not instantaneous, but hey, it's just two plugs. It's not a big deal. So that saved me a lot of money. And uh, if you wanna hear some of my son's uh, music, uh, the link to their band, Pseudo 60s, is on the link description below, or you can sort of click here, I think, to go onto their Facebook or Instagram page. Uh, they're a cool band. Okay, so that was the inputs uh, for the sound and the video, uh, which I'm really happy about. And I'm just gonna talk just a little bit about the other peripherals because this is a working office and studio. Obviously, I come here to, to work as well. Uh, so I've got a couple of little toys that I've actually uh, picked up along the way that's making my life super easy. Okay, so have a look at this guy, right? This is a... Webex room kit. Uh, I got this obviously for work. Um, the fact that I'm always using Zoom and Webex and doing stuff like that, uh, it's kind of frustrating too from a sound perspective uh, because you just can't jump into meetings uh, so quickly. So this particular unit, what it's doing is sort of plugged into uh, my Samsung 1080p uh, HD TV. Um, and uh, it's got a menu uh, right here. So what I can do is I can sort of jump on calls, receive calls. It talks to my calendar, so then I can sort of jump onto WebExes whenever I can. But you can use it for Zoom and practically every other whatever uh, virtual uh, meetings uh, that are available out there. But it just makes my life really easy when I'm doing it. Uh, the other accessory that I can't do without, especially at lunchtime, is my Xbox. Um, now that's um, the Xbox One X, the previous one. I've got the newer one at home, uh, which I am uh, used it as a PC replacement. So I'm playing games only on the Xbox um, X, uh, which is uh, pretty powerful. Uh, so yeah, so that's it. So those are the little bits and pieces. So the only thing that I'm uh, sort of worried about now is the decor. And as you can see, there's a lot of gray here. So I thought 40 years of um, Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back, I thought it'd be cool, uh, cool to have an office with that theme. I've bought a lot of Funkos um, that are are gonna sort of decorate the office. I uh, have them here and there and everywhere. That's gonna help me sort of give it a, a nice feel. But uh, I wanted to go a Hoth uh, base or the uh, Echo base, but uh, it looks more like a, I don't know, an Imperial ship, right? So all the gray and white. Anyway, uh, need to get some cupboards here to sort of put all the elect bigger stuff, more electrical wires and things like that. And then eventually maybe a nice little uh, couch or lounge down there so we can uh, sort of chillax uh, when I'm doing the, the um, podcast and things like that. So that's it guys, it's coming along really well. And um, like I said in my previous video, you shouldn't go nuts, right? Buying all this stuff at once. This has been three years in the making and it all started with this Canon M50. <laughs> and then it sort of started progressing from there one month at a time. And, um, you know, obviously uh, you set it up correctly. You, you have a business. 
And then obviously if you sort of get paid or monetize in YouTube, that's your income. A lot of this stuff can be tax deducted if you do it the right way and you talk to your accountant, uh, especially if you are in, in the business of content creation and digital media. So, and that's what I'm on. Um, and so, yeah, so it's been real helpful for me to actually, you know, get it all going. So I hope you enjoy this update. Uh, there's gonna be more regular content now that I've got everything sort of lined up. Uh, there's some cool uh, lenses that I'm gonna review. Um, there's um, a lot more to talk about, the black magic. Uh, we're actually going on a road trip at the end of the month. We're going out to Mudgee, which is inland New South, New South Wales in Sydney. Uh, three hours away from here, we're gonna take the Mustang, my brand new Mustang GT. Out, uh, on a road test and uh, we're also going to uh, do some uh, hopefully some astral photography but anyway that I'm, I'm trying to get as many things in as I can but we'll talk about it more as we get closer to that date so thanks for watching the video hopefully you had uh, a good time uh, and uh, if you have any questions about the kit and the gear just put the comments in the comment section below and until the next time ciao for now